I think I'm here and I got asked to come here because I'm a success. <laughs> That's not that common in Denmark to actually stand up and say that you are a success. But I have some kind of validation for why I'm a success. And that's not because I sold a company for almost a quarter of a billion Danish. That's because I got this much out of so little talent. That's actually what defines success. Not that you have this much talent and get this much out of it. If you have this little talent and you get this much out of it. I spent, uh, I sure as hell didn't plan to study law. I studied law and ended up first in class. I didn't plan on ending up and start, uh, you know spending four years with McKinsey, but I ended up spending four years with McKinsey and had a you know quite interesting time there. And I did not plan on actually you know go out and start my own company and sell it for for a quarter of a billion Danish. But I did because I always been craving for get the maximum out of any situation and just go for it, go for for anything. That you know I'm the last one leaving the parties. Uh, I try to be the first one up in the morning. I, uh, you know, I, and of course I sleep over and I have hangover and I'm stupid to listen to sometimes. But I just try to maximize anything I do and go for it. And that's my key point by talking to you guys today is actually you know, I think you know a lot of uh, credit for the initiative. You know, there wasn't any initiative like that when I was uh, studying law at uh, at this university back uh, ten years ago. But great to see that you know. Copenhagen University is also thinking about entrepreneurship. But I think my key point for talking to you today is just go for it. Do it. Get out of your comfort zone. There's so many people that, that are just, you know, kind of, you know, I study law and therefore I have three options. I can either, you know, work at a law firm or I can go and work for the, uh, what do you call, central administration. Or my marks were not that good and go and work for Copenhagen County. Those are the three options when you study law. And a lot of people think like that. You know, if you're studying something, you have to go on that direct route. And, that, you know, and, and also, even if you're, if you're skilled, you just go, you, you, don't, you don't test yourself enough. People are too comfortable. A lot of, a lot of uh, uh, times people have told me uh, that I, they think that I'm courageous. That I have a lot of guts. That I went out and started my own company and did it. And I think like, courageous? In Denmark? What, you know, where, where do I need, you know, God, you know, there's a safety net under me. There's, even though I, I'm, 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 you know, not very talented and couldn't get anything to work, I'll always have a roof over my head and have something to eat and get a bit of money in the bank. That's the system here in Denmark. It's not courageous. It's stupid not to try something. It's stupid not to try and start your own thing. If you have the talent. If you don't, then go and work for something. <laughs> If you have the talent, then test it out. A lot of you might be thinking, I don't have an idea, I don't know how to do this, and if I fail in doing that, no one wants to employ me afterwards. That's not true. First of all, you all have a ton of ideas on what to do. So ideas is not the hard part of the equation here. Second of all, doing it is not hard. Today, with you know, all technology available to you, this has never been easier to start a company. So that's not hard either. And so the hardest part is actually for you to do it and to accept that you actually have to, 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 to test it and accept that you might fail. So it's about you getting out of your comfort zone and just try it. Go out there, try something, do it and fail. I would, and so would many other people, rather hire someone that tried something that showed and demonstrated this additional drive to go and start something completely from scratch and fail and take someone that has been a middle manager at Mass a middle manager at Novo and done fine there and good KPIs and nice bonus and then hire them into my, uh, let's say, startup or even established company. Much rather take, take the second part. So you're not diminishing your value in the market by going out starting something. You're actually increasing your value in the market by going out and starting something. So that's just kind of to set the stage a bit here. So, a bit of background on me. How many know uh, knows about uh, soup? Uh -huh. I'm glad. So then, give me a chance to tell the story. So, I uh, a bit before I started soup, I worked for. Um, so first, I studied law, 
Then I worked for McKinsey for four years. Then I, went, uh, I left McKinsey to start my own company. Uh, mainly for the, because I saw uh, so many uh, not that bright people uh, doing uh, big things at big corporations. And I thought, if they can do this, these big things in this big company with this brain power, then it should be possible for me with my brain power to do these small things in these small companies. So that's why I started to get out there, out of the, you know, I felt sometimes, you know, it sounds a bit arrogant, but I felt that I could do more on my own. And I wanted to test whether I could do that. So I wanted to get out of my comfort zone and test could I do more on my own. So I left McKinsey and started a company uh, that did online SMS uh, with the idea of going for kind of, it was a cost saving idea for people that want to send international SMS, they could do it online, then it was a bit of convenience that you could send SMS from your PC instead of sending it from your mobile. This was December 2004. And the idea might have been fine, but we didn't execute that well. So nine, nine months after, we, uh, we liquidated the company. And so it wasn't a bankruptcy, but you know, just stopped it and paid everyone what they needed. And then we had 50 Danish left in the, in, in, in the bank and paid that back to the investor. So that was my first startup venture. So I failed. Then, on the, on the back of that, I was of course thinking, am I a failure? No. Then I'm thinking, was it just a market opportunity we didn't read the right way? Probably. Was it fun to do this? Yes, it was actually pretty fun and was very rewarding to take something up and build it from scratch and, and at least test it out in, the, in a market, in a real life situation. So I decided to try all over again. So in October 2005, I founded a company called uh, Soup. Soup uh, was started by, uh, in, in kind of, the, the whole idea was the contact list on the, ad, uh, the address book on your mobile phone. So this was 2005, pre-iPhone, pre-Facebook for any of us that did not study at Howard. And, and you, only, you had this contact list on your, uh, on your mobile phone that was kind of your social connection to, to the world. And yet, 2005, during 10 years, being the most used application on the mobile phone, there had been no innovation. The only innovation that had been was that you could actually connect two mobile phone numbers to one name. That was all. So had this humongous market, but nothing happened on this contact list. So we said, it must be possible to do something about that. There must be an area, a business model around this, that start there. That's how it started up. Not anything, you know, surprise or brilliancy idea in terms of doing that, just looking at a extremely big market of Chunjin and say, it must be possible to add value there. And if we can add value in this space, we, we think we can make a, you know, a healthy business as well. So we started looking at that, and the first thing we did was just to create a super easy uh, um, website you go to, and you create an online backup of all your contact list on your mobile. Super simple. It was an open source protocol on, on, on the mobile that you, could, uh, that you could use so we didn't have to install any software on each mobile that we want to, to go for. We just send there a binary text string and then we could unwrap these contacts and then we would upload to our website on your safe account. And then we could start using this data for a bit and start adding value. So the first thing, first of all, now you had an online backup of your contact list. Because many of you have lost their mobile phone that did not have an online backup. That's a hassle. What you could do with this online backup was also you could then take this data and put it into a new phone. So when you got a new Nokia and you couldn't have all the numbers on the SIM card, you could easily put it into the new phone. So again, pretty simple idea. Did not exist before. You could do that here. The third one, uh, the third way we made around this was that when I had your mobile uh, number on my contact list and you were a member of SIM as well, when you update your contact details, it would automatically update on my phone. So we did three simple things, so a backup, migration of data, and also update of people's contact information. And then we did with a very small team, of, we got to this first part of, with, with like five, seven people. And we could do this, and we did it with some you know, super light user interface, so it was actually accessible technology for the masses. And that created quite some, uh, some, some, some going, uh, quite some, uh, some uh, tailwind for us, so we managed to raise uh, money from a venture capitalist, or a local one here in Copenhagen, and told you in the lifetime com company we raised like uh, you know, four, million, uh, 4 million euros. They saw a simple idea and they saw that we start getting market traction. So before we had all of these three components, we actually launched it. So the first we launched was just a simple backup that got quite some, some attention. 
and we start building our user base. And then just went on and on from there, hiring a bit more people, uh, you know, she kept on focusing on this space of innovating around the contact list on your mobile. That still, surprisingly, very few people looked at. So we got quite some attention on that. It was easy to get on what we call the A-list with the press. So each time someone wrote about some cool mobile application, they would write about SIP. They wrote about some mobile social network, they would write about SIP. So we, we made sure that we were out there and people knew about us. So um, that then created some attention. We started having a discussion with some of the big guys. And then suddenly, two and a half years after we started the company, we got sold to Vodafone. And it happened, it happened in the following way. And I think that the story is quite, you know, I'll, I'll go into a bit of detail on, on, on the story about the exit. Not because of the money. I might sound like an idiot standing and talking about the money. But the reason I talk about that is that that's still in this capitalist world that many of us might love. It is the best validation of something is that someone is willing to pay 200, to the exact number, 235 million Danish for something you build. Give me any more validation, right? I can't think of any more validation. That's why the number is interesting. It's not interesting because I made a, 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 some, some box on it. It's not interesting. That was good, but, but that's not the key thing. The key thing was I got this public big rubber stamp saying what you created, you out of nothing, on your own, build a team that could help you do this, was 235 million Danes worth two and a half years later. That was kind of, that was extreme. And that was, that's definition of success. That's why I'm standing and saying that I'm, I'm, I'm a success. So, but what happened was, so we had, we had taken this, this opportunity that no one really looked at. Might sound simple, it might sound a bit lame, like selling insurances and back up on, 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 you know, for contacts on mobile. But we thought it was quite interesting. And we knew that we were onto something, because we got a lot of attention, and we were onto something that we could build into something bigger. So we start thinking about, a bit about, you know, there might be something even more so that we can do about that. Why not actually start doing software for the handsets? So when you have your contact list on your mobile, before you call someone, you'll be able to see what they're doing because they're connected to the Facebook profile. You'll be able to, to see where they were because they're connected to some of these location-based services platforms. And you'll be able to, to just get a feel for whether people are available to, to, to chat. And that was the next thing we then uh, we kind of coined the term of a social phone book. We developed a prototype on this. And we went out way long before, you know, six months before we had some software that we actually launched. To customers, we went out and said, we have a solution for the entire world. Here it is. And then we showed them the prototype. We only work on this, this single phone because if you try to install another phone, it would crash. So it was, <laughs> but it was there. And we had the idea. We went out there pretty early on saying, here it is. You can see it. And, and, and the place where we did that was actually in, uh, let's take this there. Right? Was actually in, at, uh, some, at an, an event called Mobile World Congress. Uh, Congress in, uh, in Barcelona. Have any of you, any, have you be, ever been there? It's a big, you know, it's a big place of a lot of dark suits, uh, quite boring, but, but for, for people into technology it's quite interesting and it's the biggest scene for, 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 for mobile stuff. So we had a small booth there, we paid a fortune for 18 square meters and we ended up having this booth just next to, uh, next to Yahoo. And Yahoo had a booth like, you know, they built themselves or like took them a month to build and it was probably 300 square meters and they paid a fortune for it. And we were standing there with our little, you know, we actually made the boot ourselves with some stuff from IKEA. And then we put up nice posters and then we talked about the social phone 